We want to worship you with all of our hearts, Lord. We want to praise you from the bottom of our hearts, Lord. Help us to be lustful on their own. Does the devil actually have to tempt him anymore? If someone is already on their way to hell, does the devil actually have to go, have to go there and just push him along even more? No, he's tempting us because we're on a path that he doesn't like. We're on a path, and he's trying to tempt us away from this path, right? Temptation is aimed at you so the devil can get you off your path right now to somewhere else that he wants you to be. It's the temptation from something to something. Well, why didn't Jesus eat for 40 days? Did he just run out of food? Was he on a diet? No, of course, that verse 1 tells us that he was led by the Spirit. He did not eat because he was led by the Spirit not to eat. Because he needed to maybe focus. Maybe he needed to totally depend on God. Maybe he needed to experience the full weight of being with God for those 40 days so he could go through the three years of his ministry and go through crucifixion. The, eating, the act of eating a piece of bread is not the problem here, right? Not complying with the leading of the Spirit is. Because we are Christians, when we are led by the Spirit, we must not be led away from that path, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem to be. For example, if you are led by the Spirit to spend 30 minutes a day in the morning with God in your QT, you must not let anything lead you away from that, no matter what that may be. This is temptation. If you are led by the Spirit to ask your parents to do family QT together once a week, 
Don't be led away from that. Even if you think that you're being considerate to your parents by not bothering them. If you have dedicated something to God through the leading of the Spirit, don't let anything or anyone lead you away. The only person who can lead you away from God's calling is God. Until the Spirit leads you away from this to something else, you must follow God's lead. It doesn't matter if it's a piece of bread. Man shall not live on bread alone. We must concentrate on God. You see, everything that we do as a Christian, we do because they are God's will and His command for us. Whatever we do, it's good because we have God on our mind. Everything we do, if we don't have God on our mind, it could seem good, but it's not the ultimate good. Because we're probably doing it for ourselves. The reason why we do what we do is because we love God. Amen? You are all here because you love God. There could be secondary, third reasons but the first and foremost is because you love god i'm a pastor and i do what i do first and foremost because i love god and this is what i was led by the spirit to do teachers are teachers first and foremost because they love god and this is what they were led by the spirit to do Praise team, PPT team, media team, they do what they do, first and foremost, because they love God, and this is what they were led by the Spirit to do. Many times, we get so caught up in the doing that we forget why we're doing that. For whom we are doing this for? When we lose sight of God, When we no longer are motivated by love, your calling just becomes work. Your life is full of task after task until you die. I got to do this. Why? So I could do that. Well, what if I finish that? Well, I have another task. It's an unending task. I love my wife. If I didn't, Everything I do for her will be a task and it will drive me crazy. I will be stuck in a marriage where I'd be saying, why do I do all these things for everybody? Why do I have to do all these things for Daniel? But because I love them, everything is enjoyable. It is exactly what God intended it to be. Something I do as God commanded, but something that's also enjoyable for me to do because I'm doing it with love in my heart. And instead of being grateful for the opportunity to serve and enjoy working for God, with God, enjoying working for God, not by myself, but with God, it's a joint venture. It's a partnership. I'm holding God's hand while I'm doing God's work. That's what makes work enjoyable, beneficial. Joy. If we don't have that grateful heart, we just focus on work, just completing the task, you will be miserable. Whether you're a pastor or a teacher or praise team leaders, work is work. And most of you don't even get paid for that, right? So where is the joy in that? It has to come from God, from among us. Anything for God must be done with God. Anything for God must be done with God. If you are a teacher, don't be so caught up in the goal of trying to get your kids to their quiet time, participate in the the discussion that you forget. That first and foremost, you are teachers because you love God. And this is your calling that he has led you to. 
So you should enjoy those moments with your kids, with God. If you're a part of the praise team, PPT team, media team, don't let this become a task for you. Enjoy your service with God. And know, you know what? God all did all these things for my life. He's doing all these things. Hey, I'm giving back because I love God. And you spending your time, your energy to do things for God, with God, will make your life so much more enjoyable. This is what I try to do as a pastor too. Whether I'm giving a message or planning activities, I try to make sure that it's not about giving an impressive sermon or having a high turnout events, but about bringing our youth to the presence of God and encouraging youth to be led by the Spirit to do what God is letting them to be. Not letting them leading them to do, but leading them to be. What is God leading you to be? What kind of a person is he leading you to be? In discussing, recognizing temptation, the first thing that we must become aware of is, how is the Spirit leading me? When we are tempted, Again, we are tempted away from certain things, some direction, some good, some purpose, some commitment. Unless we know our direction, we will know if we're being tempted, do we? I'm not talking about just general, okay, tempted not to watch some of those uh, YouTube channels or whatever websites or, or being, being not self-controlled. I'm not talking about those things. The purpose for your life, what you're doing. Unless you know you're heading, if you're just kind of walking around, just wandering around in your life, the devil don't have to tempt you because you don't know where you're going. You have your eyes fixed. You have a certain path ahead. Now the devil's going to come and try to tempt you away from that path to somewhere else. To somewhere he wants you to be and not where God want you to be now to find your direction your heading how you should live you must have the spirit lead you so how do you have the spirit lead you as we close i want to ask you this question are you led by the spirit right now our praise team, are you led by the Spirit right now? Our teachers, are you led by the Spirit right now? Our media team, our PPT team, me. Do you have a certain path that God has shown you? Do this for me. This is not about your life. This is not about your daily bread. Because you don't live on physical things alone. You live on me. And you will live off of me for eternity. And this is your practice run. You don't see me. You just are inspired by me. But when this is over, you're going to experience me 100%. This is like a preview. Are you led by the Spirit? If you have accepted God as your God, your Savior, and your Lord and your Master, God will lead you. No, He's probably leading you right now to a heart. Maybe you're not listening. Maybe you're not recognizing it. But He leads all His sheep because He's a good shepherd. I want all of you to be very serious about your quiet time with God, spending time with God, because that's where God's going to lead you. 
If you don't spend time with God, you will not be able to listen to his voice. You will not be able to recognize his voice. God is talking to you. Come, June, come. Or you'll be like one of those persons with the earmuffs on. God may be knocking on that door to your heart, but you have the headphones on and you have your music full blasted with this world, things of this world. You're not hearing God. That's why God said, what? Be still. Take those ear, earmuffs off, those headphones off. Be still. And what? Know that I am God. I want all of us to pray right now. First step in temptation is you have to know your heading. Because if you don't, you will not be able to recognize temptation when it comes. In fact, devil probably don't even have to tempt you because you're doing a fine job yeah. on your own. Sliding downhill. Sliding downhill. All right. Let's All right. pray. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, Lord. I pray that you would touch every one of our hearts, from me to the teachers, to the praise team, the media team, the PPT team, all of our youth, Lord, and just show us where you want us to be, who you want. And I pray that this week you will keep us safe again. Help us to not be full of ourselves, but being full of you, Lord. We pray all these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, one, uh, the CM group has probably been, been calling on some of you, maybe. Uh, VBS is in, in about a month, and Pastor David, he really needs your help. So, uh, if, you can, if you can volunteer, if you could help, please help the CM. You could come here, and he needs uh, help like doing like those dance praises, because... He said he can't really dance that well. So he needs somebody who could kind of lead that. So please. And number two, we're having a graduation luncheon on the 30th. All of the teachers, except for teacher Daniel, you'll be in Korea. Right? Okay. Uh, if you can make it, please come. All of the youth. Uh, if you can make it, talk to your parents. If you can make it, please send me an email, text cut talk, whatever, and let me know because, you know, I want to make a re reservation. Uh, and uh, and we're going to be leaving here about probably like 12.30ish and come back at about 2.30ish here after our luncheon. Okay, let's go into our small group. Thank you.